Hello, and welcome. Finger Puppet Management presents The VHS Seller by Group 9. We are a group of USF St. Pete students, and our membership com consists of Ryan Barfield, Chris Goodzak, Carla Gray, Kelly Dunn, and Jeff McCarthy. The target audience of our presentation today is going to be management students between the ages of 18 and 35, young professionals, and really just anyone with an interest in management concepts. We were tasked with creating five episodes with a unique setting, plot, and characters. The goal was to integrate management concepts and present the concepts in such a way where the, the viewer would not really be immediately would not immediately recognize that they were learning. Um, this was understandably a difficult task, and much of our time was spent brainstorming. Our ideas ranged from logical to the utterly insane. And what idea did we end up choosing? Well, of course, the insane route. Our TV show is titled The VHS Seller, and it stars Revis and Jughead. The VHS Seller is an ill-fated VHS tape sales concept located in a fictitious hipster neighborhood in the Tampa Bay area. The VHS Seller bandwagons on the concept of the vintage delivery of media, such as the resurgence of the vinyl record. While the VHS Seller was originally started as a hobby by a privileged child of a wealthy movie director, and was run for many years with massive operating losses, the owner recently decided to attempt to make the business profitable. Knowing nothing about running a profitable biz business himself, the owner sought the assistance of a recent business degree wielding college graduate, our main character, Greg, or Mr. Wright. What Mr. Wright lacks in real world experience, he attempts to make up for in his theoretical knowledge of management. Mr. Wright is oblivious to the challenges that await him. Our next characters are the two incumbent employees that Mr. Wright inherited, Revis and Jughead. They have a strong bond with the owner, and the owner has given Mr. Wright specific instructions that he cannot fire Revis and Jughead. And they also bear a strikingly suspicious resemblance to Beavis and Butthead. They occasionally do idiotic things, and for them, everything is either cool or it sucks. The last character is the owner. He has little involvement in our plot line, and he's only often referred to as a source of stress for Mr. Wright. And from the characters, we're going to transition into a summary of two of our episodes. And the first episode we're going to summarize is dealing with individual decision making. Uh, this, and this episode begins, um, and it's dedicated to showing how Mr. Wright comes up with the idea to implement a new structure, structured method of managing his business and his employees. The episode progresses to show Mr. Wright explaining and implementing all of the changes to come. Mr. Wright makes several changes and tries to transform his employees into something they're not. The show ends with Mr. Wright having to try to, a new method to deal with his employees because so much structure affects them negatively. The episode opens up as the viewer watches Mr. Wright silently thinking about how he can manage his business and his employees effectively. He vaguely remembers the decision-making models he learned about in school. After, and after pulling out his old textbooks and brushing up on what he learned, he makes a decision and can't wait to tell his employees about it. The next part of the episode is meant to take the viewer through the seven-step program of implementing the classic or rational model of decision making. Mr. Wright explains to Reeves and Jughead that they need to be able to follow the seven steps religiously. This includes being able to identify the situations, develop objectives and criteria, generate, analyze, and select alternatives, implement their decisions, and monitor and evaluate the results. 
the episode comes to a close as the viewer watches all of the structure that Mr. Wright wanted fall to pieces. He is deeply saddened as he realizes that Reeves and Jughead proved to be too much for this model of decision making. He decides to go back to the drawing board in hope of finding better strategy. Our next episode is going to be dealing with strategic management. Utilizing strategic management process he learned during his time at USF St. Pete, Mr. Wright attempts to explain to Reeves and Jughead how he will be rebuilding the VHS cellar from the ground up. During a sit-down meeting with Reeves and Jughead, Mr. Wright establishes that the general direction of the VHS seller is to be the number one provider of top quality vintage VHS movies. Mr. Wright continues to explain the company will employ a product differentiation strategy. They will also place a greater emphasis on marketing. And Mr. Wright introduces the idea that Reeves and Jughead could play a major role in marketing due to their knowledge of the target market, hipsters between the ages of 18 and 35. Lastly, Mr. Wright informs Rebus and Jughead he will conduct quarterly performance evaluations to assess their progress, making strategic changes as needed. After fully explaining his strategy, Mr. Wright realizes that managing Rebus and Jughead will be much harder than he ever imagined. The rest of our episodes will be on YouTube, and you can refer to the YouTube channel, and, and please check them out. Our general conclusions on management, we came up with these as a group, and um, we have the following conclusions. If this class has made one thing evident about management, it's that management is not simple. Being a manager, you're required to wear many hats. When you break it down, managing can be described by its functions, roles, and the dimensions of the job. Functions include planning, organizing, directing, and controlling. Roles include informational, interpersonal, and decisional. The dimensions of a managerial job includes the demands made on it, constraints placed on it, and the choices permitted in it. As it seems, management is a complex web of duties. So to be an effective manager, our group feels, it is necessary to possess all of the aforementioned duties. It may seem impossible to be able to possess everything, and it may be, but it is the striving to master each and every duty that can make someone a great manager. And as the saying goes, a jack of all trades, trades is a master of none, but oftentimes better than a master of one. Our group created the following reflection video based on input from each group member. It represents the cumulative experience of our group, and it also includes advice to future students. The link will be below in the description, and if you please call that video up and, and review it. And this concludes our presentation, and, and we thank you for taking the time to view it. And we hope that you've learned something, and we hope that you visit the YouTube channel, and watch the remaining, remaining episodes. Thank you.